There'll be a variation in time. Depending on the size of the key. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> It's summertime, a time of scorching temperatures, sweating, even when you're in the shade, especially if you're in areas down here in the south where it gets to be pretty humid. Oh, yeah, and time for bugs. And one of my least favorite is the cicada. I don't know what it is about that sound, but it kind of like drives me crazy. But, but, we're not gonna focus on being negative. We're gonna be positive, focus on the positive. Because at this time, a lot of people look forward to time at the pool, seeing fireworks. And if you have a garden, enjoying a nice, juicy, homegrown tomato. There's nothing like it. But also enjoying cucumbers, and peppers, oh yeah. And squash, summer squash. Over the years, I've grown a number of different varieties of summer squash. Yellow squash, straight neck squash, patty pan squash, also called scallop squash. But my personal favorite type of summer squash is zucchini squash. I just love it. And did you know that reportedly zucchini is originally from Central America and that European explorers in the 1800s took zucchini to cultivate it in Europe and that the first reports of zucchini in the United States are from 1920s when Italian immigrants brought zucchini to this country. Oh, Just a little fun fact there for you. Oh and another one here's just a bonus one for you and that the word zucchini comes from the word zucca, the Italian word zucca and it means squash. This is another free one for you. Uh-oh. For the past two months, we've been harvesting zucchini here in the garden. And most people prefer to harvest the fruit when it's small to medium in size. And it is a fruit because it starts with the flower, which is also edible. And then you have the zucchini squash. But what we have here is a monster sized zucchini, which is actually called marrow. It's no good, can't use it, right? Wrong. You can actually still use this, believe it or not. It's not bad. <laughs> and another one. Let's see here. And what do we have here? Ooh, is, this one, is it even bigger? It is longer. Oh boy. <laughs> That's pretty long, man. <laughs> All right. Check out all the zookas that we have here. The marrows, the AKA big zucchinis. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> but did you know, just another did you know, that the Guinness World Record for the tallest or the longest zucchini marrow measured in at eight feet, three inches tall. Man, that's big. 
and the heaviest one weighed in at just under 65 pounds. So mine are like little guys, babies compared to some of those. But I do think that the one that I picked today is longer. Yep, yeah, it's longer for sure. It might be the longest one that I've harvested so far. So we'll just store it here on the shelf. And some of you probably wondering, what are you gonna do with all of those sucas? <laughs> what all of those marrows? One thing that a lot of people don't know about zucchini is that when you allow it to get large like this, you're able to store it in a way similar to winter squash because when it's allowed to grow, zucchini gets firmer and more shelf stable. And that makes it where you can store it for months. Some people say three to six months and even more. But in order to store it that long, you need to keep it in an area that is cool, it's dry, it's frost free, and they don't need to be stacked one on top of each other. They need to have it where air can circulate through because still air makes them rot. So these slotted shelves are perfect for allowing airflow to go through and around our zookas here. Some of you may be saying, Fit Farmer, it's good that you can store them that long, but once they're that big, how do you use them? Do they taste any good? Well, let's take a few of these inside and we'll show you. Oh, let's also turn off the lights. So you're in a hurry. Well, you better calm down. We're all just around you, just join the fun. Cause if you're in a hurry, you're missing the point. Should enjoy the fruits of life instead of chasing coins. Because oh, it's a beautiful day. Is it all? It's really interesting how we've become accustomed to eating so much different than how our ancestors ate. You know, they grew squash, zucchini squash, but you know, they wouldn't have eaten just all of it as these little pieces that we find at the grocery store. They would have grown it for like this to be shelf stable for a longer amount of time because they had to plan for winter. They had to make sure that they could feed themselves all through the winter. It's just really interesting to see how much it's changed the past hundred years or so. Yeah, because little small tender plants or fruit wouldn't store nowhere near as long, no. nor would they be able to feed. It would, it would provide less sustenance for people to eat. And so. they didn't have any seeds. They would The seeds aren't mature, so you couldn't even save seeds from the little ones. So you have to at least let some of them get this size. Definitely, it would definitely be more sustainable to grow them to the larger size for multiple reasons, which is another reason why we have grown them to be this size. Because on the farmstead here, I am trying to focus on preserving certain varieties that work best for our family. And zucchini is the best summer squash for us. And that's what I've been focusing on growing and with only growing zucchini, they produce zucchini seeds. So that way next year, those seeds will make more, what? Zucchini plants and zucchini fruit. Since we're saving the seed for next year, we're separating the seeds out from the flesh that's in there. And uh, what we'll do is we'll cover these with water and the rest of the flesh on there will separate. So we'll have uh, clean seeds to dry. And what's the purpose of peeling it? Well, the skin is really thick and I don't know how it's going to react whenever it ferments and I don't want to run the risk of it being super chewy and yeah, nobody eating good. it. No. Thanks for peeling it. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't think I've ever eaten it this 
big raw. I'm not sure if I have either. You want to taste? Sure. I will too. Taste first. <laughs> <laughs> I see why you make the ladies go first, right? Such a gentleman. <laughs> It's like a crunchy melon, almost like an unripe honeydew. Yeah. It doesn't have a lot of flavor, but I like the crunch. Yeah. So what do you call a bikini that you wear to the zoo? I have no idea. A zucchini. <laughs> I know, it's a dumb joke. The dad jokes. The dad jokes. <laughs> We're doing fermented zucchini two ways. And right here, I'm cubing this up to make relish. Mm, I like relish. You just think of like some pepper relish on some like hot dogs. Or I even like them on the tacos. <laughs> Do you like relish? Let me know. Let us know in the comment section below. I hope not. <laughs> Making real shit and a sad thing. Red onions are the worst for me. Start to cry. Just a little bit. <laughs> Do it to you, or just the red onions. Red onions do it the worst, I think. I don't know why. I didn't know relish was gonna make me so emotional. <laughs> oh. Tears of joy of using our harvest. <laughs> preserving. I can't control myself. It's just a beautiful moment. <laughs> and hopefully my uh, makeup's not running. Uh, oh man. Sorry. I didn't even know it happened like that every time you cut red onions out. <laughs> not every time but I don't know. This time more than normal. Whew. Burny, burny, so I'm gonna keep them back here. Okay, spice it up with that. And we like lime in ours. And we got our handy dandy juicer. Squeeze it in there. Okay. And then I like to go back and put the first one in there and squeeze it again. To get more. salt on here and bring out 
its own brine. So I have hot peppers in here. Oh, we're kidding with these gloves. So some people ask, you know, why don't you put apple cider vinegar in your ferments? Well, you don't put apple cider vinegar in ferments because it'll actually stop the growth of the good bacteria that you want that's working to ferment everything. And it can uh, make your ferments have a weird texture and a weird taste. So you don't want to do that. And actually, zucchini has a lot of good beneficial bacteria. I was even reading that it can have even more than cabbage. Another reason to ferment your zucchini. There we go. So I put salt on this and it's drawing all the liquid out of the zucchini. So once the ingredients start to produce their own brine, is that the key for what you're looking for? Well, yeah, you're looking for that, but you gotta work it in really good too. So it's kind of a little squishy, but not too squishy. So we'll see how much brine this has. If it doesn't cover everything, we'll make a brine to top it off. Wow, that's pretty neat to see how the salt is able to activate things to, to draw out the liquid. So that way it kind of preserves itself. The salt is an important part of that. It's pretty amazing. Wow. This makes me think of in the Bible that it talks about salt and it being so important. Not, not just for flavor, but also for preservation. It's pretty neat. Put our weight on top. We want everything to be below the liquid just like that and you may wonder if you can can your ferments and you well you can but you'll kill all of the bacteria that good bacteria that you want so ferments are meant to ferment and then you put them in the refrigerator once you get them to the taste that you want and it stops the process of fermentation i'll put that weight on top oh it's gonna overflow And for this one, I'm going to use a fermenting lid. And this has a one-way gasket on there. So just put this on, tighten it down. And it's a neat way to keep up with your ferments too. So it has a little thing on here and you just put it on the date that you started. So that way you know whenever you started and you're not unsure about how many days has it's been fermenting. Wait to go on this one and I'm gonna overflow this one too. Push that down. And that one's too tall. Both of these are too tall. So we're gonna do this a little different. And this will show you that you don't need any special equipment to ferment. Now I could go back and take some of my ferments out of here, but I really don't want to do that. So this is an easy way. If you don't have a fermenting lid um, to use, you can just take your coffee filter and put it on top and put a rubber band around it. Because you really just want to make sure nothing gets in there. And for these, they'll probably still let some water out and you know, your fermenting will go in there. So bubbles will come up. Set these on a plate on your counter and let them ferment that way because they have a tendency to overflow. And like one time with my sauerkraut that I was making, it overflowed on my counter and on the other side of the counter was Sayla's piano. And uh, we ruined the whole keyboard <laughs> with my ferments. So. Don't do what I did. <laughs> Man, I'm looking forward to that relish. But as you were finishing up the relish, you also accidentally made something else that was really good. Just a little bit left. I'm gonna try it on a chip. See here. Mmm. 
That's really good. I would totally eat that just as a salsa. Oh, I gotta try one. Let me have one. <laughs> one. No, maybe I'll keep it for myself. Here we go. There you go. Let's see what it tastes like. Mmm. It is good. I could eat that as salsa all day long. And just think, people throw away these big old zucchini because they think you can't do anything with them. Make a salsa out of it. Especially if you got a party or something. <laughs> you have a couple zucchini, you could make a huge bowl of salsa with two zucchini, an onion, some cayenne, and lime juice, cilantro call it a day. In addition to the fresh salsa that I accidentally made, it's good. the fermented relish, I made another ferment. So all of these things, I have three zucchini made all of this. I mean, this is one of those cases where bigger is better. <laughs> Only three zucchini to make all of this. The other ferment was zucchini pickles. I took another large zucchini did the same thing, cut the ends off, cut it in half, remove all the seeds, peel it, but instead of cubing it, this time I cut it into spears. I then Put it in my jar. Chopped up some garlic and cayenne pepper. Added that to my jar. Finished filling it with zucchini spears and added my brine. Added a fermentation weight. And then put on my fermentation lid. And wait, there's more. <laughs> In addition to those, you also made recently pasta out of zucchini. This sounds like a bad infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> and buy your zucchini now. <laughs> <laughs> and for the zucchini pasta, all you need is a peeler and you just take it down to nothing. You can also use a mandolin slicer, but if you don't have that, you can use a peeler. You've made this in the past and you made it as like an Asian dish, like a peanut sauce or something like that. But this time you did something a little bit different. Yeah, just threw some butter in the pan, put the noodles in there, noodles in there. <laughs> Zuka noodles. That's zuka noodles. That's what I need to call them now. They're now zuka noodles. <laughs> Put them in there with a little salt and pepper, sauteed them until they were tender, took those out and topped it with fresh tomatoes and basil right from our garden with a little olive oil. And it was really good. And our daughter, Sayla, has really been getting into making zucchini bread here lately. She just grates up the zucchini and then puts the ingredients together. I don't know all the ingredients, but it turns out to be really good. I love it. And the last thing that I made recently with the, these gigantic zucchini are zucchini boats. They were floating on down. <laughs> no, not really. It's super easy. You cut off the ends, slice them in half, clean them out. Then you have your filling for your boats, which can be anything. You can use beef, you can use chicken. I use chicken. I sauteed an onion, threw my chicken in, some of our fresh tomatoes since we have an abundance of those. Dice those up, throw them in the pan with a big handful of basil. Let that simmer a little bit. Took all of that and filled it in our zucchini boats. The liquid that was left from cooking the tomatoes and the chicken, I put that in the bottom of the pan so it would help steam those zucchini boats. And then I put it in the oven. The bake time on your zucchini boats is really gonna vary. I started out with 40 minutes for hours. 
but it ended up not being long enough. So I added another 20 minutes, pulled it out. I was happy with that. Put the cheese on top, put it back in the oven and let that melt. And I must admit, those boats were even better than I thought that they were gonna be. They were good, it was just yummy, eating all that stuff out of it and with it, it was just, it was just great. And even after making all of that stuff with those big zookas. <laughs> the big zookas, sounds like bazooka. We had a ton of seed left over that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be starting another round of zucchini for the fall, and yes, you can grow squash in the fall in some areas like down here in the south, we definitely can. As well as we're gonna have seed, so because we had so many, we're gonna have seed for next year as well. So those seeds that were left over, we rinsed them off in the water in the sink. And then I took them up, put them under a fan to dry out. So there you have it. Those are just some ideas of what you can do if you have some big zookas. <laughs> big zucchini, whatever you wanna call them. <laughs> have any of you made anything special with your marrow, zooka, zucchinis? Let it me know, let us know in the comment section below. But definitely encourage you to try it out. Grow some big zookas. <laughs> it may need a little longer than that since these squash are so thick. But you just wanna cook it until you can stick a knife in the side of your zucchini boat and it comes out, it's really soft to stick it in there. I don't know that sounds Maybe cool. I would say, the time may vary on how long you need to cook it. Yeah. Depending on how big your zucchini is. <laughs> but the thing to look for is the, just to make sure it's... <laughs> Tender. <laughs> Tender. <laughs> how big my zucchini is. <laughs> We don't need any more innuendo for our children to copycat. There will be a variation in time. Depending on the size of your zucchini. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> it's okay, everybody say it. <laughs> How many people watch the end of this video? <clears throat> Look at you and say it. <laughs> I won't comment. Let's <laughs> get serious. Let's finish this. Let's do it. Come on. Let's You're the one that did it. You're the one that started all this. Oh, that's what they say. <laughs> so you. <laughs> all right. I'm serious now. Depending on the size of your zucchini. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at you. You started laughing as soon as I said it. No, I was looking outside. You were laughing. No. Juggling, don't lie. <laughs> no, because you were laughing. All right, come on, let's do this. Uh, <laughs> if I said it the other way, that was <laughs> I don't even know what you're saying, so like, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me. I don't know if I can get it out. Take a, take a deep breath. That's what I have to do. Call it a marrow or a marrow. Depending on the size of your marrow. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Oh, okay. so you can say zuka. Okay. <laughs> that sounds funny too. Depending on the size of your Just zuka. Just be quiet. It's like Just bazooka, be quiet. bazooka. <laughs> Shut it, really. <laughs> Alright, I'm coming to it. That's the stuff. <laughs>